So there is possibility of entrapment of the slag and the inclusions, that means the foreign unwanted particles. There is possibility of improper filling of the liquid material due to the partial solidification of uh, this material, partial solidification before the proper filling of this cavity. Okay, so there. Uh, that's why it's required to design the getting system. Now this is the total channel. Now this one, this is called the pouring basin. This one is called sprue. This is the sprue base. This one is runner. This is gate or ingates. This is the product cavity and this is called the riser. Okay. Now in this fixed in this picture, we find that all the element have some different dimensions and shape. Okay. And all these shapes have some that means definite purpose okay so in this one the pouring basin so when you will fill the liquid material through the ladder in between this channel so the first L, first part this is the pouring basin so what will occur at first it will fill at first it will fill so when it will fill then when uh, you fill uh, by the liquid material so there is no direct contact of the liquid material with the wall of the molding sand it will fill in between the pre-filled liquid material. So it will absorb some amount of kinetic energy and reduce the erosion of the molding sand. So this is the pouring basin. Now this is the sprue and you will find that the, that, that the shape of the sprue, this is tapper. Okay, it's not uniform. And there is some pur that the definite purpose, why, why we make it tapper. Now when you fill the liquid material, what will occur? So it will fill from that point, so gradually it will fill in the downward direction so when it will flow in the downward direction its velocity will increase and we know that when its velocity will increase its pressure will decrease okay so if you consider the pressure at that layer this is the atmospheric pressure so this is the some uh, the, this is some uh, you can say that this is some definite and this is closed space so this is the atmospheric pressure so here when it will travel in the downward direction, its velocity increase, the velocity of the liquid material increase, so at the same time its pressure will decrease. So here this is the atmospheric pressure, so here with decreased pressure, you can say that this is the vacuum pressure. This is the vacuum pressure. Now if vacuum pressure, it will generate in this space, what will occur? So surrounding of this channel, this is an atmospheric pressure, so there is possibility of there is possibility of entrapment, okay, or you can say that the possibility of flow of the surrounding vapor and the gases towards this channel, okay. So ultimately it will disturb the flow of the liquid material and also these gases will entrap in between it, okay, and it will make the defective product. So that's why for getting the uniform pressure, okay, or you can say that the positive pressure, we make it taper, not the uniform. If you make the uniform, so vacuum pressure will generate and the surrounding gases entrap in between the liquid material. So for getting the uniform pressure or the positive pressure above the atmospheric pressure, we make it taper. Now the next one, this is runner. This is runner. This is rectangular or trapezoidal in cross section. This one, this is called runner. Okay, also here we make some provisions to entrapment of the foreign particles, heavier and lighter inclusions. This is called the scheme bomb. Okay, this is called the scheme bomb we place in between the runner. Okay, now after that, this is gate or the ingates. Gate or the ingates. So from the runner, liquid material flow through the gates, gate or the ingates towards the cavity. Okay, towards the cavity. So that means liquid material fill from the pouring basin, then screw, then the runner, then gate or ingates, and after that it will fill the cavity which we make by the pattern. Okay, with the product dimension, and after that this is the riser. Okay, this is the riser. Now, what is the function of the riser? Why it's required to place the riser in that that position? Okay. Now, when you fill from that point, if there is no riser you install, what will occur? You cannot say that at that instant the cavity is filled by the liquid material. Okay, you cannot say that. But when the riser will also fill with the liquid material, so you can say that first. The cavity fill, then the riser fill. That means the riser fill, that means cavity already filled. Okay, so that's why we install the riser. So this is some primary purpose, but not all. 
there are some other purposes also for the riser. You can say that when the liquid material fills through this channel and when the surrounding gas, surrounding atmosphere contact with this the liquid uh, liquid material, then it generates the gases or the vapor. Okay, and it will escape from the porous surface of the mold, but it's not so easy because there is some resistance. Uh, okay, but you can say that this is the open channel. Okay, and here the resistance is less. So through this channel, before complete filling of the product, the gases easily escape from this channel, from the riser. So this is one advantage for, for using the riser. And also the most important one, we know that it's required to provide allowance to compensate the shrinkage. Now we compensate it by using the, by providing the extra dimension with the pattern. Okay, this is the shrinkage. We provide the extra dimension with the pattern so that we can compensate the shrinkage. But with by using the pattern, it's not possible to com compensate the total amount of shrinkage because you will find that when the liquid material solidify, it will solidify in three stages. Okay, in three stages. First, it will solidify in between the temperature range. This is the melting point temperature to the solidification temperature. Okay, melting point temperature to solidification temperature or you can say that the melting point temperature to the liquidus temperature okay then the solidification take place in between the range the liquidus and solidus okay liquidus and the solidus liquidus that means above this temperature all the material will liquid in liquid state and solidus that means below that this temperature all the material in the solid state okay so in between the liquidus and the solidus temperature there is the combination that means mixture of liquid and solid okay there is mixture of liquid and solid okay so there are three stretch from the melting point temperature to the liquidus temperature then liquidus to solidus then solidus to the room temperature okay then solidus temperature to the room temperature now in these three stages in all stages we'll find some amount of shrinkage okay some amount of shrinkage now by Providing the allowance, the shrinkage allowance with the pattern, we compensate the shrinkage. What occur at the time of that? Uh, what occur in uh, at the time of the shrinkage in between the solidus to room temperature? Solidus temperature to room temperature. That means the shrinkage which occur in between the solid state. But the shrinkage occur from the melting point to liquidus and liquidus to solidus. These will compensate by the liquid material available in the riser okay so when the shrinkage takes place in that stage that means from melting point to liquidus and liquidus to solidus it will compensate its volume will decrease and the the decreased volume this will fill by the liquid material available in the riser okay because you can say that first fill the cavity then fill the riser okay so the riser material riser liquid material it will solidify at the you can say that at, at last point okay at last time okay first the material solidify for the product okay then the riser then the riser you can say that first solidify that means the uh, the solidification of the riser material take place at last at last okay so the company that that means the sinkage take place for the product Okay, so this will compensate or this will backfeed by the liquid material available in the riser. Okay, so that's why these are the main functions of the riser. First, it by filling the riser, you can say that the, the cavity already filled and also the that means the, uh, the burn gases and the vapor, these easily escape from the riser and also the, that means the, the, the sinkage takes place at the time of uh, the melting point temperature to liquidus temperature and liquidus temperature to the solidus temperature the sinkage volume it compensates by backfeeding of the liquid material available in the riser so these are the functions of the riser so from this figure it's clear that there, there is required some proper channel through which we fill the liquid material in between the cavity we cannot fill it without this design channel if you fill it with without this design channel, what will occur? There will be turbulence of the liquid material. There will be erosion. There will be uh, that means uh, uh, it's there is possibility of throwing the foreign particles, unwanted particles. Uh, then the inclusions or slag through the liquid material in between the cavity. Okay, so ultimately it will uh, it will uh, decrease the quality or make the defective product. 
Okay, so that's why it's required to uh, required to provide some designed channel through which we fill the liquid material in between the cavity. And these designed channels, there are different shape and size parts. This is the pouring basin, runner. Sorry, this is the sprue, runner, gate or ingots, and the risers. Okay, different shape, different size, different dimensions. And each and every one, each and every dimension and shape has some definite purpose. Okay, why this is capper? To make the positive pressure, positive pressure, so that vacuum pressure cannot generate, and there is no possibility of uh, of, of entering the foreign, that means the the outer gases in between the liquid flow. Okay. Now this is the runner gate and the riser, and it has definite purposes. So this is all for preparation of the mold. Okay.